We are in the kitchen today with Miguel Maestro. Bro. Hey, amigo. What's up? How's, how's it all going? Welcome. What are we, uh, what are we cooking? We're going to make a paella a la maestre. I've never actually made paella at home before. It's funny you say that because in Spain it's the most homely cook meal that you mm. can cook a paella. And in Australia we got that protein that is really hard to achieve when it's actually really simple. So the first thing to make a paella is a really good sofrito. It's like the soul of the paella. So mm. we'll start with the tomatoes. Chop, chop. You can use any tomatoes. Anything is available will work. We wanna go for the capsicum. These are called piquillo peppers. They peel, they roast them, and they're really sweet. So these are the ones that have come in a jar. Yeah, the camino jar, you can get them in any supermarket in Australia, so it's not like a fancy ingredient, mm. but they're so good, and they save you the time to be roasting and all that jazz. Mm. Would you ever use fresh capsicum? You can use fresh capsicum, but when you roast vegetables, the volume of the sweetener goes up, and this is really easy to do. You don't have to peel them in the same time. What are we doing? Garlic time. I'll give you a quick tip how to chop garlic really easily. You use the knife and your five fingers, and you use them pretty much like a hammer. You go over and over oh, again. I like this a lot. Yeah, there you go. You want it to chop it as small as possible. Right, so it's just so it spreads throughout the whole dish. And the caramel is beautiful. What next? We're using chives, and originally my mum always used to use onions. So onions and chives are the same family. Right, so yeah. this is actually a replacement. Okay. Yeah, so you still got your oniony flavour, and they mix with the sofrito ingredients. Mm. And I think we start working the parsley. We want to chop them just from really high, so we don't lose all the use in the board. So you don't want to sort of grind the herbs down? The herbs are very delicate. Just be gentle with them. Now what are we doing next? We're going to take our chicken and chorizo and we're going to start the cooking. Is that just chicken breast? So as a chicken breast, you can use chicken thighs, any chicken. You can use chicken on the bun. It's got a little bit more flavor. We're using pizza and sausage. Awesome. Well, let's get cracking. You're gonna start the pan and we're gonna achieve a little bit of heat in there. Because that's another very important thing we start cooking. Making sure that pan is hot. We need to achieve temperature. So when we put our first ingredients, we get the first searing. So do we want the pan scorching hot? No, it's scorching hot, but yes, nice and hot. So when you put your oil, it doesn't burn. And when you put your chicken, it starts sizzling. So how will I know how hot it is? Well, I think once you put your hand on top, you can feel the heat of the pan. Yeah. So that's a good start. So we put on olive oil. OK, about a tablespoon or something? Yeah, maybe two and a half. And what we practically want to do here is to squeeze all the flavor from the chorizo. All right. Oh, how good is this? And when you do that, this is very important. You never get your pan off the heat. The pan always gets in contact with the flame. And if you want to shake it, you move the pan but you don't move it out the heat, so you don't lose the heat. I don't know, I've never known that. So you shake, shake, but it's still in contact with the fire. We don't want to caramelize it too much. OK, OK. So we're going to do it, just put it in this plate. So the chicken is still kind of raw in the middle. Wow. Look how golden the oil has turned. I put the pan really quickly back in here, mm. and now we put all our ingredients from the sofrito. We cook them with all that goodness. Cobo. Go for it. Yes, 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 yes. I love the crackling. Just being gentle and keep shaking everything around. We want to cook off oh. the water of the tomatoes. And now we're going to get the saffron. Now, saffron. But I don't often have it in the house. If you cannot afford to use it, we need to maybe use more garlic, or we need to use more paprika, or we'll put more capsicum. And after we're going to do the paprika. All right. Out of the stock okay. and just pour it really nicely inside. You see, we got that layer of paprika and saffron in the bottom. About how much do you reckon you use? So, we in? always use the double of the stock than the rice that we use. So, if you use one glass full of rice, you use two glasses of the stock. So, what we're looking for here is bring it to the boil. That means that we are ready to put the rice. This is a Spanish rice. Now, you know when you make fettuccine? 
You then use two minute noodles, don't you? <laughs> so you should get Bomba Spanish rice. rice. Just use your hand to sprinkle it everywhere. And now we put in the chicken and the chorizo and all that really nice juice. So do we layer this sort of evenly? Just put a sprinkle everywhere. All we're gonna do is wait for 15 minutes. Yeah. The stock is gonna disappear. So this is, let's, we don't do anything. Let's go and have a sangria. See, that's the right mentality. <laughs> put the food on and then go have a nap. Let's do it. So I'm not seeing much water here anymore. The stock is all gone. How do we know when it's done though? So you get a spoon now, look inside. You're looking for the crust all around the base. Oh, okay, I feel like this is it here. We switch off the heat because this is still cooking and we put some greens on top. These are just frozen peas? Yeah, or? just frozen peas, they've been defrosted. Just a handful. So how come we're adding the peas at the end? Because when it comes to vegetables, we're gonna cook them the less as possible. We're gonna leave this in the pan here without touching it for another five minutes. The residual heat is gonna do the job and we'll be eating paella very soon. All right, so we've let it sit for five minutes. A little bit of lemon going on top. Oh, mate, I cannot tell you how excited I am about getting into this. It's look how crispy. sticky it is and the bits that are stuck to the edge of the pan. Oh, it's so good. I love it, even just the lemon sort of has that nice little kick at the beginning when it goes into your mouth. It's really nice and rich and strong flavors as well. And the rice, it's not mushy. You know what I mean? Very loose and it's got mm. a body. Oh, look, look at this nice crustiness at the bottom, this crunchy. Oh man. So are you brown? How are you feeling about your first paella? Well, I'm actually thinking that I could do this so much more often now, you know? Because I always thought you need one of those big fancy pans with a big flame going on underneath it. Isn't it a frying pan? I'm just really happy that you enjoy it. Mate, my very first player, because I did all the work, man. I know, I didn't do anything. You I did just not do anything. Singing La Bamba here for you.